Hi everybody, welcome very much to match number two of the third and fourth placement set between Beastie on the color orange playing as the Abbasi Dynasty versus Louis MT on the color purple playing as the Ubits. The map is Lipany, the home turf of the Abbasi Dynasty. Ubits should do nicely here as well. This is match number two and it's a best of five. So at least after this match, at least one more will be played. But hopefully we go all the way into match number five. Guys, thank you very much for watching. Your support is greatly appreciated. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. And use the links down below to find me, Beastie and EGC TV live on Twitch. And it's a very interesting matchup here. A Basid and their variant civilization, the Ayubits, coming through. Now, I will give the advantage to the Ayubits. If they do damage early on because if they don't early on i don't i'm not exclusively speaking about feudal age right they could just uh, I can, it can be as well early castle age right but specifically why because a vast second tc or 30 c then if they grow too much of an economical lead it's going to be very complicated for the ayubits to crawl back into the game now they have a lot of tools that's for sure because they can edge up first, grab all the relics, thus diminishing, reducing the economical difference, right? And uh, just by killing villagers with Gulam spam and Camel Lancer spam as well, that could be very strong for them. Because then... Uh, I don't know, because th then they have very good bonuses, right, as well for... Um, the Avasi for the Ubits in the House of Wisdom. and But the thing is, Avasi can go with Military Wing, and then you have Boot Camp and better Archers. And then their main at arms is going to be tankier, their good arms are going to be more tanky, Spears as well, Archers as well, Crossbows as well. And then the only advantage that the Ubits will have will be the Camel Lancers, but then Avasi has Camel Riders. No way! Look at what's happening in the corner of the screen. It's a Trade Wing for Beastie! Wait, there you go. The trade wing is going to be here. BC going a more greedy route versus the Ayubits over here. Also, Ayubits also aging up. We don't know what it is. It's the military wing. Free unit every two minutes. Yeah, every two minutes it gets a free unit. That's huge value, especially on the feudal age, right? Where your economy is at the weakest state. Of course, we don't, <laughs> we don't include the dark age. Right, but uh, it's gonna be actually a very good trading post here. You can, I think, you need to chop a tree. Like, I don't know if the market fits here, but if it does, you put it here, you make one wall, two walls, and then it's gonna be a great trading post. It's gonna be hard to secure, right? Because the Ubi is gonna have the, the desert raider roaming around the map, chilling, ready to perturb that trade. And then they can very quickly go into Fast Castle and spam uh, Camel Lancers. So it's going to be hard for Beastie to actually defend that trade. But if he's successful, he's going to have a huge economical lead, right? I think he's already anticipating the 8 free villagers that Louis will gain on the uh, Castle Age by aging up with the economical wing growth, right? But let's see what happens. That's a lot of sheep on both of the scouts because they don't need to come home and deliver them because they are on the berries. But look at bro, those berries, they're like the size of two people. Look at that. Right, I never realized that. There we go. Three free traders coming out. There's a trader, will be coming out too. Oh, but the desert trader is not going to meet the trade. Twitch chat saying feature of this map is you shouldn't be able to put market in the corner. Ah, I see. I think you can't fit here unless you chop a little bit. You can always put it there, right? Just put it here and it's chill. But here will be way better, right? But here we go. Desert Raider. Raiding. Not going for the trade. Because uh, Louis saw it, right? Louis scouted. He saw the trade wing being built. 
As the trader will raid the gold, Beastie researching the bonus, uh, the secondary resource. It's gonna be very, very good. That's how um, Marine Lord beat Louis with the Abbasids. Marine Lord was Abbasids, Louis was the Ottomans. And the Ottomans have better trade in terms of gold. But then Abbasids can also have a slightly better trade in terms of gold. But then they also have that secondary resource, right? And it's 25% of the gold that you carry. So in Imperial Age, they carry more gold. And then, thus, they carry more secondary resource, which was food. So, Marine Lord had like 30 uh, traders carrying 25 food or something like that. Every time they touch a market, they dropped 25 food. It was ridiculous. It was, he had so, so much food. So much food. It was very, very good. There you go, Beastie. Walling in this side. He wants to drop the market over there. Some, wait, some horsemen? There you go. It's actually a very interesting um, interaction between horsemen and desert raiders. Because desert raiders, they counter horsemen. They do plus 13 versus cavalry. But the horsemen, they also counter ranged. And the desert traders are ranged. But there's only plus 9. So that will be 18. And the desert traders will be doing 26. So they, they win, right? 120 HP versus 125. Two ranged armor versus five melee. But why? Why they have five melee armor? Come on, these units. They, they kind of broken. If you think about it. Ooh, versus oh, there you go. Beastie picking up the reinforcements. I like that. I like that. Golden Age Tier One activated for Beastie, and also for Louis. Louis gains ten percent gathering rate for all resources. Beastie gains 15% gathering rate for all resources. Beastie, oh, we can't see how many traders he has. He... Uh, 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 four, I think it's four. Because wait, you, you can't make traders from here, right? No, you really need the market. So wait, how do we... Oh, because he built it here. Nice. And then he just builds another one there. Or I think, I think that it's good enough. Oh, villager goes down for Beastie. It's okay. He's getting a good lead already. Six traders, 60, um, 56 gold and 14 food. Uh, not bad, not bad. Of course, it's not the best uh, trade, but it's not bad. Especially for Feudal Age, it's pretty okay, pretty good, if you ask me. On the other hand, wait, is Louis... No, Louis is making units. He's not making archers, horsemen, three desert raiders. Beastie needs an army. He's, he's going only um, horsemen here. Right? I don't know if that's the right choice. He's now... He was going for... No, he's going camel archers! That's that's good, that's good. It's actually pretty good. Because they will nerf... They, they will debuff the horsemen and the camel riders. And they are more tanky than the archers. So I, it's, it's a way more expensive composition. Right? Oh no, traders! Traders dying, bro. That's one trader going down. Beastie, five economical units ahead, though. But yeah, Beastie's composition will be well more expensive. The Camel Archers got their price reduced, though. My bad, guys, I was sneezing. Bliss me, because you're never going to be less. And uh, Camel Archers now cost 170 food instead of 180. And mo many people be like, bro, why those units are so expensive? Not because they are strong, but not because of that. Because they also nerf the enemy units. Right? There you go, Camel Archer. They are here. Protecting the trade. This is a bad fight for Beastie, of course. He's losing a lot of units, but he has 11 horsemen. They're just not here. They are all the way over there. Yes, I think he can win this fight. If he snipes the camel, the desert raiders, he wins the fight, of course, right? Okay, yeah, Louis has to run away. This army for the beast is quite scary. Even though they are nerfed. Uh, debuffed, I mean. 
All right, Beastie's pulling back. Another another camel archer are here. He's here. Beastie trying to engage. The trade is exposed. Archers sniping the camel archer. But that, that means that our, the horseman will s snack on those archers very, very comfortably. And only two desert traders are not enough, right, to kill all these horsemen. Bro, great fight for Beastie here. I like what I see. The horsemen are owning the fight. Camel archers go down. But I think we have enough, for, enough horsemen here for Beastie to clean the archers and the enemy horsemen too. Very interesting feudal fight here. It's rare to see these type of compositions. But Beastie is going all in on the horseman route. And he's getting it. He's snacking. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, Camel uh, Desert Raider though. Goes down. Hey, hey, I like that. Horseman chasing down the archers. Good damage. Beastie should be free to trade right now. And economic will units ahead for Beastie. That's very, very good. He's now running away. Beastie lost a lot of um, horsemen, that's true, but I think he's chilling. He can rebuild quite comfortably. Let me see. Traders? Oh, it's the, it's the, the same trade route. Not a new market yet. And Beastie is fully walled here. So, at least on this side, the trade is very secure. Also walling the other side. And if you think about it, Lou is only making archers. So, he can't really burn the walls. Right? But I think the Desert Traders can, if you switch to melee, though. Another market. Let's go. Beastie going crazy on the trade. Up to 13 traders. Delivering 14 food every time they touch a market. So, 28 um, in the full trip. That's a lot. That's a lot. Because, of course, the goal of the trade is not to provide you your whole food income, but it really helps out. Right? Louis, on the other hand, making more archers and desert raiders, so he's giving up on the horseman approach. Yeah, I think desert raiders... Louis is not building barracks, no. Louis is going all in in the archers and desert raiders, which in theory should work because the desert raiders will kill the horsemen rather quickly. But Beastie has camel archers and archers, and they will just snipe the, the desert raiders, right? Yeah, and Louis is not building barracks at all. More archery ranges, actually. More! More archery ranges, brother! That's what I say! <laughs> I think Beastie chose very well to go all in on those horsemen. And he's knocking at Louis door while edging up. It's the military wing. And the military wing for the Vassid will spawn the two camel riders. Which they counter. Cavalry. But just oh, oh my god. Louis was edging up. I didn't realize. My bad, guys. It was the eight free villagers. Bro, one of the most broken age ups, in my opinion, the free eight villagers. I think it should work like the shinobi for um, for the Japanese, while you like they came out slowly, not eight immediately. But okay, yeah, there's a traders too. Please, me, I agree with Twitch chat. Need a couple spears too. Oh, here we go. The manganel is not finished. The manganel is not finished for Louis. So, the, bro, the horseman ate everything. Now, but there is a lot of firepower, yeah. There is a lot of towers and archers there. The horsemen cannot uh, sustain all that fire. But hey, Beastie buying time here. Almost 20 economic units ahead. Right now, 14. But look at the food. Bro, he clicked to a jump. Right? He clicked to a jump, but he has almost on 2,000 food already. He's on the deer, on the berries, on the deer over there. The trade is giving food too. I think uh, BC should really build a market here. Because the, the, tr the trade will get exponential, exponentially better. So instead of 56, it could be up to 70 gold. And perhaps 20-something food. That will really 
skyrocket the economy of Beastie. There is a reason the markets don't spawn right over there. Because the trade works like that. Oh, there you go. Military wing, boot camp, and composite bows. Remember this. Beastie's archers will be incredibly good. They will be more tanky. They'll have more HP, right? And they will attack super fast. Beastie floating wood. He needs to make more horsemen. Actually, maybe knights. It's gonna be crossbows and knights to switch for Beastie. Bro, I, I love games like that. When you play feudal and then you play castle. And you see that you see the upgrade archers to crossbow, horsemen to knight. And it feels it really feels like you're watching an empire grow, right? When you people just go past castle, it's it's not really an empire growing, but that's for another video. A ram coming in. Louis 40 archers, hold on. This can be very dangerous. They have plus two attack, plus two defense. Right? They can snipe horsemen very easily. They can snipe that uh, camel archers, but they can snipe camel. Riders and um, the Manganel is not here, so Louis cancelled the Manganel. The Manganel is not here. Beastie made a Springle, but I don't think Beastie knows that there is no Manganel. Bololo! Good movement there, though. Beastie, can he doesn't see the if there is Manganel or not, right? So he builds a, um, a Springle just in case. I mean, it doesn't hurt. Archers picking up the trade. Knights. Well, Desert Raiders versus the Camel Lancers. This is really bad for Louis. Louis is going down. Knights and Horsemen chasing down the Archers. Archers are in panic mode. They can't do much versus these Knights. The Knights are tanking all the damage. There was a Villager there in the fight too. I'm pretty sure Beastie didn't realize that. But the trader, the, the villager goes down, but Beast is almost 30 economic units ahead. Losing a villager here is really nothing that important. And remember that Louis gained 8 free villagers, so this economical lead is great for Beastie. He's floating wood, he's killing all the archers. He needs a bit more gold, but he's using a lot of gold. Maybe for technology, I don't know. He has a thousand gold per minute, but only 57 in the bank. He's chasing all the archers, camel lancers arrive. They go down immediately. The knights plus crossbows plus camel archers. Louis is not prepared to face this beast's army. We need something. We need a front line. We need some gulams. We need some spearmen for Louis. But he doesn't have time to make the switch. He's making a springhold, but that will not really help. Beastie army also, I think, does not have enough a consistency to go under these towers, though. Towers doing a lot of damage here. Beastie goes down. Not Beastie. The knights go down, right? Beastie's knights go down, and everything... Back to square zero. Beastie has a little reinforcement over here. A good number of knights. But keep in mind, Louis with three relics. But bro, Beastie has trade. I, I don't think he really cares about the fact that Beastie, that Louis has three relics. It's like, alright, you have um, some extra gold. I have trade. Alright. Beastie coming in. Beastie killed seven villagers. Beastie is super ahead. Economically speaking. There we go, picking up the archers there. That's really, really good. Alright. Busy losing a lot of army though. Killed a good amount of archers, that's uh, of villagers. That's really, really good. Needs to be careful. Because he really has to defend the trade, right? Walls were rebuilt. So he's chilling on that department. So many traders! Let's see. In total, 40! 40 traders! My god! And uh, there is another upgrade. No, it's the camel. It's the armor upgrade. Grants plus 5 armor to traders. And trade ships. I mean, if your trade is being very harassed, I guess. Because then you don't lose them as quickly. But in reality, it doesn't really do much, right? Maybe... A bit of extra movement speed will, will be nice, like 10 extra movement, 10%, not literally 10, right? 10%, like, just like the, to be a bit more like the Mongol trade, but then it will be very broken because they generate more gold than the Mongol... Actually, no, because the Mongol trade, they have the, um, the Silk Root upgrades, right? Yeah, but PC is generating an inc incredible amount of resources. Louis, running out of food. Whoa, we got the Sultan's... Tower, the Tower of the Sultan, and remember, they move the uh, 
uh, they move faster, the more units they have inside. They're really slow right now. As you can see, 0 0.5 tiles per second. But if you place units inside, they will move faster. Oh, good snipe here. Tower of the Sultan going down for the cavalry of Beastie. And more villagers from Louis being picked up. Oh, this is going so bad for Louis. Bro, I like the death animation for the Sultan Tower. Yeah, Louis losing so many villagers and units right here. Knights and horsemen deleting the archers. We need some crossbows actually for Louis, but it's only going archers. And Camel Lancers is not working out, Louis. And GG gets called. Well played. Beastie ties up the series. It's 1-1 right now. Very, very well played. Trade wing. Good protection of the trade. A lot of horsemen in feudal. Louis needed some spearmen. Needed a different game plan here. Wasn't able to adapt. Wasn't able to do better. And look at the... They, bro, oh my god. The economical difference here. Ridiculous for Beastie well played. And the Avazid again. Most a lot of people call them the trash dynasty. But they bro, they at the top level, they're winning the important matches. Right? Casual 11 k more food. Casually 7k more gold. You know, nothing too special. Just a little bit of more resources, you know what I'm saying? Not too much. Amazing. Louis actually was able to produce a lot of units, but it was mostly archers, right? And though Beastie has less units, it's knights and horsemen, so they'll just delete all of that. Let's see, militarily speaking, Beastie killed way more units. It's GG, Beastie's back on the set. Let's go to game number three.